Pastor Tom Arnold welcoming you to the Good News Radio broadcast. In Isaiah 43, God declares, I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Today, I'll be teaching about God's plan for reaching people. Join me for part one of the message, Gathering the Harvest. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Good News Radio Broadcast with Pastor Tom Arnold. Tom serves as pastor of Good News Church in Yukon, Oklahoma, and is our teacher on this daily program. It is his desire that you will discover God's abundant plan for every aspect of your life through the faithful study of God's Word. Join us now as we go into today's message. I'd like for you to open up your Bible to the Old Testament passage. It's found in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 43. And I tell you what I'm going to do tonight. I want to share with you a message about gathering the harvest, gathering the harvest. You know, sometimes we kind of think, what kind of day are we living in? I mean, what kind of day are we living in? You know, the year, this year, what kind of year is this? Well, in the eyes of God, it's harvest time. And I know a lot of times we emphasize the fact that Jesus is coming, and I certainly believe that, and I believe in the rapture of the church. For a lot of people, he's coming this year. You know what I mean by that? In other words, he's coming this year. They're going to meet him this year. It won't be through the rapture, but they're going to go into eternity this year. While we want there to be this great outpouring of the Spirit where we see many people ushered into the kingdom of God, thousands and thousands of people brought into the kingdom. What we have to realize is, is that many times God wants to use us the same way Jesus, while he was on the earth, there were times when great multitudes came and heard him minister the word. But there were a lot of times it was just one by one. You know, he ministered this individual and he ministered over here and he ministered him in this house and went over there and ministered to this individual. So I think it's a little bit concerning whenever I, as a pastor here, people talk about this great outpouring and this great revival, massive revival that's going to hit. And though I believe and I want that to happen, and I pray today for that to happen, but I don't want us to kind of shift into neutral to where, you know, until that happens, I'm not really doing anything, so to speak. We got to believe that we can do something today Your life was reached, and so we want you to reach other people, and we want to share the gospel with other people. So, yes, we're believing for this great influx of a last-day harvest, and we'll read scriptures about that tonight. On the same token, we have to realize we're all micro-revivals, right? We're all mini-revivals. How many know, even if there's not a national revival in the next two weeks, you can be on fire for God? That's what I'm trying to say. Even if like, you know, there's not, everybody in the White House doesn't fall under the power and get right with God. How many know you can stay right with God? That's what I'm trying to emphasize, right? So there's things that we can do. Now, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter number 43 and verse number 5. This passage is what we call messianic, and it's a prophecy that relates to Messiah, but it also relates to particularly the nation of Israel. The regathering of the nation of Israel is talking about when Israel is reestablished as a state, as we saw take place in 1948. So it is prophetic in that regard, but I believe there's a double reference, and it's a picture here tonight of how God's able to draw people, God's able to gather people in. Isaiah chapter 43, verse number five says, Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring your offspring from the east. Did you know you can read the Bible and, you know, you can read a passage like this that was written over 700 years ago, excuse me, 700 years before Jesus was born was when this passage was written. And you could read this passage and God could talk to you. My mother I I just thought of this when I read it. She said she was praying for my sister who was living in the east, eastern, southeastern part of the United States. And she said, I was praying over my daughter. I was praying that God would touch her. And she said, I started reading my Bible one day. And she said, I read this scripture. I'm going to bring your offspring from the east. And my sister called her not too long after that and said, I've decided to quit my job and move to Oklahoma. (laughs) So, you know, 
Do you understand we read the Bible and we know that it has prophetic application and we know that it had a word to that generation specifically about the regathering of the nation of Israel. But do you understand as you read the Bible, God can also choose to talk to you out of that passage and give you some something that will feed your spirit. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give up. And to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and I made. So what the Lord is saying here is I'm going to gather people. We say north, east, south, and west. God's gathering people. God can gather people into this church. God wants to gather people into really every church that's preaching the new birth. God wants to add to that church. God wants people to come to know him. So when I'm reading this passage, I was in a time of prayer last week, and this scripture came to my mind. And I just think it's something that we need to just thank the Lord for his ability to gather people north, east, south, and west. He's able to bring people in. He's able to cause people to come from all directions, we would say. Of course, the Lord did that with the people, the nation of Israel. They were dispersed, and then the Lord brought them back together. Well, he's able to bring in people in this last day from all different directions. So we're talking about gathering the harvest. This is a picture of a harvest, of people being brought in together, being drawn supernaturally by the Holy Spirit. Now, whether we are conscious of it or not, the number one work of the Spirit of God is to bring people, to draw people to Christ. The Spirit of God is out constantly bringing people to an understanding or bringing them to where they have a sense that something's missing, there's an emptiness, there's a void in their life, and they need to know the Lord. Now I'm going to go over to the book of James chapter 5 and verse number 7. This talks about this end time harvest, okay? James chapter 5 and verse number 7 says, Be patient, therefore, brothers, unto the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient for it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also be patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. So the Bible says in the day that we're living in, the Lord says we need to be patient for the coming of the Lord. Now, I know the Bible says he's coming as in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. I don't know about you, but I think, Lord, we're definitely living in those days right now. I was praying today, and I was thinking about, you know, I had a vision. I saw what we ultimately knew as COVID-19. I saw a vision early on in that, and I saw that it was like an overflow, and I saw that coming on this nation, and I saw it was an overflow of sin, and I knew that the sin ultimately would produce this, not to the individual, but to the nation. It was just affecting this nation. And it was like the Lord showed me that a cup of wrath, a bowl of wrath was being. And when I saw that, it was like God didn't do this. It was just corruption, sin, and evil. And I knew the key to changing this isn't just getting mad at China or getting mad at this, that, and the other. The key would be for people to repent. And today I'm praying and I'm thinking, Lord, I don't know that we're better off where we stand tonight than we were. In other words, I can't tell you that, oh, yeah, we've had wholesale revival and change and people have repented in this nation, and it's a whole lot better than it was. But politically, it's worse, actually. I feel like Nehemiah going through the, the he drove through the city, he's walking through the city, and he's just grieving because he's like looking at the condition of his city and going, what in the world's going on here, God? But the Lord's saying we've got to be patient, and here's the reason why we've got to be patient. We've got to stay steady in our hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the early and the late rain. A couple of weeks ago, I was with a farmer out north of Yukon. I was talking to him, and I was wanting him to help me with some little welding. And, and he said, well, now, I'll be honest with you. I'll be in that tractor here in a little bit. As soon as the fields dry out, i got to get in that tractor because I've, I've got some work to do. And it, we're working long hours. And so I'm talking to him, and I'm realizing as a farmer, he knew i got to reap this harvest because it's time now. 
to reap this harvest. But he was patient enough to know when the right time was to reap that harvest. I believe the Lord wants us to be discerning to know when are people ready? We need to reap that harvest. You know, now's the time. We need to, there's a vulnerability. There's an openness to the gospel. There's a susceptibility. They're more open. Did you know not everybody that has ears have ears to hear? And I've just learned sometimes when I want to talk to people, if they don't have ears to hear, y'all, I'm wasting my time. If people don't have listening ears, Jesus said, don't cast your pearls before the swine. And here's what he said, they'll turn on you and they'll rend you. In other words, they'll turn hostile against you. But the other side to that is there are people that have ears to hear. There's people that want to know about the Lord. And we have to recognize the day that we're living in, there's a precious fruit of the earth and we've got to be patient. And it says, ye also be patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Now, that was written many, many years ago, but it's still true today. If we're just closer to that day, it's closer than we imagine. It's sooner than we imagine, and we need to stay ready. But let's just be real. If you read this passage, and we know all Scripture is inspired by the Holy Spirit, this scripture gives us a picture of harvest before coming of the Lord. It gives us a picture of harvest before rapture. That's kind of the anchor that we hold on to is that in America, we're believing for harvest before rapture. Now, let me say, he can come anytime he wants to, right? He doesn't have to run anything by Tom Arnold. Do you all realize that? Jesus is not going to show up and say, Tom, I'm going to run this by you before I do it. How many know he's not going to come to Good News Church and say, I'm looking for a show of hands. If we can get a show of hands, everybody's in on this, then I'm going to do it. He's not asking that. He's the Lord. I'm not the Lord. But I'm saying if I'm looking at Scripture, it sure gives us a picture of a harvest before the coming of the Lord. I'm saying that to you so that you don't have a, a fatalistic attitude to the extent, well, well, Lord, I just give up on this old world. I just, Ichabod, the spirit has departed. What if we're saying that and the Lord's saying to us, actually, I want you to reap a harvest in that old wicked generation. What if we're kind of having the attitude of, Lord, just, hurry up and do what you got to do and zap it, you know, call down fire from heaven. You know, what if the Lord's saying, actually, there's a harvest I want to reap. There's something I want you to do. So there's a balance there, right? There's a balance there in that area. Let's go over to Matthew's gospel, Matthew 9, 35 through 38. Thanks for joining me for this message titled, Gathering the Harvest. God has a plan for the salvation of every man. Often this plan is to reach people one-on-one. -on -one. Nicodemus, the madman of Gadara, the woman at the well, Lydia, the Philippian jailer, as well as Onesimus are all Bible examples of people who were reached one-on-one. -on -one. Thank you for listening to today's message. You can hear this message again by visiting online at goodnewschurch.tv. To listen to this and many other messages by Pastor Tom, download the Good News Church mobile device app by searching for Good News Church Yukon through both the iTunes and Android stores. Through the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast. Pastor Tom invites you to visit Good News Church whenever you are in the greater Oklahoma City area. Good News is located at the intersection of Main Street and the Yukon Parkway in Yukon. He welcomes you to worship with them on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good News Church, it's a great place to be.